course, every night here on Fox 9, we take a closer look at the weather and hopefully talk to a weather whiz kid. That's right. And learn a little bit while we're at it. We're sure. talking about uh, some snow that's going to be headed our way again soon. And I can't wait for skiing this weekend, Scott. Yes. Hopefully, it'll all work out for us. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it certainly will. Roland, you're, you're right on the mark there. A lot of folks still saying winter needs to stay here because yeah. we've got to get some skiing on in. And I think that'll be the case for this weekend. But, you know, after that, things may start to change coming in. So we need to talk about warm weather as well. And here's a question that's not been asked in the year and a half or so we've been doing this. And uh, it's a great question from Garfield Elementary. Tonight's Weather Whiz Kid. Hi, my name is Mariah. I go to Garfield Elementary. And my weather question is, what is the heat island effect? Excellent question. What is the heat island effect, other, otherwise known as the urban heat island effect? And here's what it is. What we're talking about is, generally speaking, when you get a, a city, the larger the city, the major city, you get a warmer temperature around that city because of all of the buildings and all of the human activity going on. So you see this little red bubble in here, the urban heat island effect. So the sun warms the buildings. Remember, the sun does not heat the air directly, really, only minuscule. The sun heats solid objects. That's why we feel warm when we walk outside into the sun. As you'll especially notice that during the spring, we feel a cool breeze, but then the sun can be so warm. So the sun warms solid objects. Well, out here in the, in the fields and the, with the trees and the grasses, you get a lot of evaporation. And when water evaporates, that is a cooling process, okay? So evaporative cooling occurs. That kind of keeps the temperatures down a little bit. So during the day, the buildings warm up a little bit more than what happens around the outside. And then at night, the atmosphere really cools down quickly in the outskirts. And then over the heat island in the downtown locations, you tend to have this little bubble of warm air. And it is more noticeable at night than it is in the morning hours, or should say during the afternoon hours. So it may be a few degrees warmer than the outside areas in the afternoon, but it's a little bit more warmer at night around the cities. That can affect the overall temperature averages around the globe as well, by the way, because when you have weather stations around places that are growing, you'll tend to see that temperature go up, and so you'll start to see average temperatures warm, and really not much is changing except right around that area. So when you look at what goes on as far as the temperature over downtown, it can be several degrees above outlying areas, and you can see the comparison here from some of the different locations here an urban residential area, the temperature's here. At a park, you might have more trees, so the temperature dips a little bit. And then residential areas, it may go up a little bit. You look over here, the rural areas where there's not much going on at all, that's generally the coolest location. And the temperature may only be 85 here, but yet 92 in a downtown location. So that is the urban heat island effect. And downtown Boise is a little bit warmer. Remember, the airport where we officially record uh, the observations is way away from downtown, so it can actually be warmer downtown than it is at the airport. And typically in the afternoon, it is. Makes sense. We don't have to worry about that too much for a while, though. Yeah. Yeah. You won't <laughs> notice that on more. Saturday when the wind is howling. No, right. I don't think so. Exactly. All right, thanks, Scott. Okay.